Well, you know, recently the American Angus Association they updated their economic assumptions and, you know, those are, it's on a three-year rolling average and they made the decision to make that update during the off-season of selling uh, cattle, which I think is a good decision. And the updated assumptions are uh, going from 165 days on feed to 160, as most of these cattle are being fed a few less days, uh, lowering the corn uh, price or the the price per hundred weight on, on feed. And uh, as we've all seen in those markets, that is, has uh, changed drastically. And then uh, changing the fed cattle price from $1.30 a pound or 130 100 weight uh, to $1.40 a pound. And I think all those things drive home the fact, and there seems to be lots and lots of discussion about what the numbers are today. But I, as I visit with my friends and customers, this is all just math, and it's numerical. And so, actually, if uh, you chose to play with those interactive tools that we've had at the American Angus Association for over a decade now, and you put in those assumptions of what the price of cattle were, uh, you would see those numerals get much larger as they have. And so, who would have thought? I mean, we had a set of customers that sold 525 pound uh, steer calves for fall delivery at three dollars and nineteen cents uh, this past week, and and so cattle have more value, and so I think the association did a good job of of reflecting that. Some would say, you know, the three-year rolling average is too slow, but you're you're slower up and you're slower down, so it gives us more of a target. But back to the main point of, of numerically, you know, there seems to be a lot of discussion about the post-weaning index dollar beef uh, always has been. But it's a post-weaning index that takes into account, you know, growth, uh, marbling, muscle, fat, uh, dollar energy, all those things that, that occur uh, for a post-weaning index and, and the value of all those traits and the cost of, say, feed for the dollar energy. And so today we have bulls that are actually over $200 on the dollar beef index. And, you know, the number one bull of the breed uh, is actually a $220 bull. But I encourage our customers and friends and partners to, to consider it. You know, I always like to talk about Michael Jordan, how he could either go to the hoop or, or he could, you know, shoot the three-pointer. He could do it all. And so we have to be a little more sophisticated and have multi-trait selection. So let's take a look at it and let's, let's sort bulls that really fit the industry, that we really know what they are. Because most of those bulls with the $200 plus projections, in general, uh, they don't have a lot of data, especially when you look at the end product merit of carcass. Um, and so a lot of those bulls, uh, you know, they're driven by growth. Pounds have a lot of value. Uh, I would come back to the, the fact that uh, we want a pound of, of gold, not a pound of lead. And so we want that composition of that pounds to be extremely good for marbling and muscle and fat. And so ultimately, when we look at most of those bulls on that list, none of them have any carcass data. So let's make a multi-trait selection and let's uh, select bulls. Let's just say, oh, 14 or so for Cabernet's directs, which, which would put them in the top three or four percent of the Angus breed for Cabernet's. Let's keep them at breed average for stature at plus 0.5 or less. And let's take them in the top uh, one or two percent of the breed for that post weaning index of dollar beef. And let's, let's put another little nuance in here that's really, really very important in the business of beef, and let's look at the carcass traits. Let's look at them to be for 0.6 accuracy or higher for the carcass traits, and that, that would actually equate to about 35 carcasses. So first of all, they're not, there are not enough Angus bulls that have that kind of information on them, but when you do that, um, there's five bulls uh, two especially that fit that criteria. Uh, that's the ABS bull, the KCF Bennett Absolute, and the bull that was uh, born and bred here, Gar Sunrise. And if you, if you drop that percentile just a bit and you look and you, and you tweak those things, and, and let's just say we're going to take top 5% all those things, it's the good bulls of the breed. It's, it's, uh, it's bulls that excel for cavities, moderate stature, early growth, in product merit, you know, Heifer pregnancy, all of those bulls that I'm talking about are in the top 20% or better of the breed for heifer pregnancy. So when we make those multi-trait selections, we make those decisions based on a proof, 
Michael Jordan, as many know from the story, uh, he was cut from his high school basketball team early in his, his youth. Well, when he proved himself more, just like we have to do with these bulls, um, he proved to be uh, a big boy. And so we don't want to use a bull in a big way as a big boy until he has that multi-trait proof. And, you know, there's a lot of, of discussion and they talk about marketing mating or I'm, I'm doing this because it'll be real exciting. To me, the most exciting thing is the most predictable, accurate cattle that we can possibly get. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really exciting for me to have those kind of bulls available to the industry that can excel across the board. I mean, those bulls that we're talking about with that upper percentile cabinese, moderate stature, um, early growth, in product merit, heifer pregnancy, we didn't know those things five years ago, let alone 10 years ago. And so we will have more and more better choices all the time, but they will come from the sons of those multi-trait specialists. Because when we get right down to it, when I hear people say, you know, I, I did this because it's a marketing mating. You know who I don't want to fool most on earth? That's me. I've got to know the truth before I can bear down and know exactly what that is on a bull. And so if we're using bulls that we really don't know what they are, you know, it's kind of the great Angus hope. And so if we're going to go for the great Angus hope or we're going to go for the most predictable, profitable cattle that we can possibly get, nothing has changed from the days of Henry Gardner and Roy Wallace. High accuracy, progeny proven bulls for all of the traits of merit, steady progress, we go forward.